Call now. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. What's going on? Today is Thursday. It is January 26th. This is Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. And we're coming to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. And keeping my eye on the Farmers Insurance Open. What a freaking phenomenal, gorgeous, amazing San Diego. Hey, the rest of the world, take a look at us kind of day. I mean, it is freaking blue skies and the blue ocean and the green grass of Torrey Pines. And uh, listen, I got it. You know, the NFL playoffs are happening this weekend. Jim Nance is freaking calling golf from Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. The world is focused. The sports world is focused on the NFL playoffs this weekend. But we got the Farmers Insurance Open, which played the first round yesterday, second today, championship round on Saturday. We'll be out there, certainly in the morning. Come on by and say hello. When I say come by, I don't know where I'm going to be. I'm going to be walking around. Alex will be walking around. So, man, what a gorgeous day. What a perfect day uh, to show off San Diego to the rest of the world with the farmers. Pretty windy, though, in our neck of the woods. Pretty windy. It sounds like a tornado pretty. outside. Really? Yeah, it's Pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty windy. Over really? Here, dude. Really? I don't know how it is in North up there where you're at, but yeah, it, it, it is was, very windy. It was weird for a second. I went outside. I was like, well, who's throwing trash cans? Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's the wind. Like it's, it was bad for a good 10 minutes. I got to tell you guys, mm-hmm. um, North County, I cannot report the same conditions at all. As a matter of fact, okay. earlier in the day, I was watching a lot of the coverage um, from Torrey Pines. And when I was watching guys on the practice tee, and I could see the flags out, you know, in where they're hitting balls. Wasn't a lot of movement. The trees weren't moving. I mean, just – and I can tell you guys, it all seems quiet up here. So, if you go on the uh, on the weather app here, I never see the wind little icon. Mm-hmm. But it literally, it's been the wind icon all day here. For where wow. That wow. Took, I went out this morning to get uh, a coffee, and it was just crazy. Crazy windy. Trash okay. everywhere. Really? Everywhere. Trash everywhere. 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 Hmm. Everywhere. So, so we got to hit a lot. golf ball in this. It's going to like, remember that game in Chicago where the people like Robbie Gold kicked one and went. Yeah. 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 Like that, that's yeah. kind of how windy it is. Yeah. You, I didn't hit know a, that. you, hit a, you hit a golf ball here around here, might hit you back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Boomerang. The tough part of town, huh? Yeah. <laughs> golf balls ain't taking it no more. Right on. So, uh, we'll get to some farmers insurance open stuff as the afternoon goes on for sure. Uh, definitely going to be jumping in to the championship weekend because lots of news um, and lots of content coming to us from the NFL. We'll get there. We'll get a lot of stuff getting into that. Um, I do want to say this. I didn't put two and two together, but we got really kind of lucky last night, the three of us. And it wasn't just us, but with our, our whole group. You know, we decided, we talked about this a lot yesterday, and people have been hitting me up going, how was it? How was it? We, um, the three of us, and others carpooled up to uh, up to Staples, up to crypto.com to see the Lakers play the Spurs last night. And you might be wondering why, why would you guys go do that? Um, San Antonio, not exactly an attraction. Well, when we got the tickets, it was because they were easier to get than the night before against the Clippers, you know, who's going to see the Spurs. But then last night, Anthony Davis came back, which was kind of cool. And the, um, and the kid they got from Washington, Rui, is it Hashimura? Am I saying his name right? Yes. Okay. He played last night and the Lakers were involved in a competitive game, which kept us to the game until about five minutes to go in the fourth quarter when they took a 10 point lead. And then again, I never really put two and two together yesterday, January 25th, we go to a Laker game and today is the three year anniversary of Kobe Bryant's death. And obviously other people, including his daughter on that, that helicopter. But when I think back guys to three years ago, I know exactly where I was. It's one of those moments in life. You just happen to know exactly where you were, you know, driving to Miami to the convention center because we were down there for what his radio row, but we were calling podcast row because we were like the only people doing what we were doing at at that time. And um, we're driving down on uh, on the 95 freeway in in South Florida, driving to, to Miami. And Alex, was it were you sitting in the back it was seat? Me. 
I broke the news to you guys before we jumped on the elevator coming down from Pratty's, and I was like, this isn't real. I remember telling you guys, like, I don't know if this is real, but I'm just seeing on Twitter that Kobe said. And then by the time we got to the car on the freeway, started driving, that's when we had, like, an hour, because there was so much traffic in the South Beach. We had, like, an hour of who was in the helicopter, who was not in the helicopter, how many of his kids were in the helicopter, the whole families, and the, all these conflicting reports came out. By the time we actually settled down, met with Howard, Howie, and got our press credentials and everything, kind of like everything came out by then. That was like yeah. three, four hours later. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that car ride was just your cousin trying to talk about, you know, us being in Florida and the three of us only wanting to figure out what the heck's going on with Kobe. Oh, damn. I forgot about that. So my cousin Jason was going down there with us, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah, oh, he was showing us around. You know, we went to Versailles. We were kind of going to Little Havana. We did. We were just kind of driving around South yeah. Beach. That was the plan for the day. Yeah. And it kind of just soured the day a little bit. I and mean, we did it all, but it kind of soured the day a bit. Yeah. A lot. Um, yeah. And, 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 Row. and by the way, um, after so after this day three years ago, where we all find out Kobe Bryant died, um, later that week, later that week, right, we are hearing coronavirus, coronavirus. And again, Browner was on top of it before us, but I was blowing it off from the beginning. I was like, ain't got nothing to do with me. Browner wore a mask on the flight, and we laughed at him. Yep. Facts. Mm -hmm. Yep. I did not, and I got the original COVID. Right. <laughs> right. Never miss a day of work because you are a bad man. You are tough, buddy. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so what happened was, is, uh, yeah, this, this day, three years ago, Kobe Bryant died. Amazing. Like, can't even believe that, that guy, with his life, you know, uh, perished in a, in a, in an accident that day, you know, and, and his daughter and all the other people that were on that, that helicopter with him. So almost three years to the day, last night we go to a Laker game and, and we went to a Laker game that was really just kind of expected to be, Oh, ho hum, big deal. LeBron won't play AD still out. They don't have this guy. They still should be able to win this game. You know, not, not exactly a buzz and an excitement, but we guys, we got lucky, man. We picked, we picked the right game given kind of the circumstances of people thinking about Kobe, a lot of those Kobe jerseys in that arena last night. Yes, it was. And then right into this the, today, you know, and, and well, last night seeing the game and then today being the anniversary. The shirts outside crypto made a lot more sense now. There was like knockoff Kobe shirts for mm -hmm. sale, but they were so sad looking. Right. And I was like, why are they selling these like sad looking Kobe shirts? Because I was going to, I always like to buy knockoff stuff. I like to help those people, whatever. It's my thing. And <laughs> I was going to buy one, but I was like, this is a really sad Kobe shirt. I don't want that. So I didn't buy one, but now it makes sense. Right. I, know. I, I thought it was the 27th. I, I totally missed the day. I, for whatever reason, I had 27 in my head. But yeah, today is three years. Right on. Yeah. Well, we went to this game. On a positive night. note. Yeah. Last night was great. Dude, it was fun. It was a lot of fun, wasn't it? I have a new favorite Laker. Oh, really? I said it before we got in the elevator. I'm all in on Rui Hashimura. All in. <laughs> he is my favorite player. He is my favorite player. I, I don't know what a... it is about him. Is I think he... it's because he's young. Oh. I think it's because he's athletic. Mm -hmm. I think it's because he can actually create his own shot. I like everything about him. I've heard him speak now. Dude, the fact all that he's in. a black Japanese guy is so freaking unusual at least to me, it makes it super young and cool. Yeah. I, have, I don't, come on, seriously. Like in, in the NBA, tell me like a super cool guy from around the world that you look at and you go, that guy, man, he's from that part of the world. You know, Luka Doncic, you're like, man, that guy grew up in that part of the world. You know, Pau Gasol grew up in, in Europe, in Spain, right? How about the two-time MVP who picked up his trophy on a, back of a horse and carriage last year yeah yeah where is <laughs> in the middle from? of croatia yeah where's he from the joker croatia croatia so um all these guys from around the world that you see come in guys from china right mm -hmm. i mean when, when yao ming showed up in the nba you were like oh my god dude that's like a seven foot seven inch 
Chinese dude. One of my all-time favorite players, Pau Gasol from Spain. Yeah. Dude, like re- remember seven the seven foot two dude from remember, Spain. Remember the Lakers had to get their own Chinese dude after the yeah. after the Rockets had Yao Ming. They had uh what was this kid's name? He was so bad. He was so bad. Uh Yi. So bad. Uh, some, he was so bad. But don't you guys what I'm getting? Jeremy Lin. Jeremy Lin. Okay, but is isn't Jeremy Lin American? But he's yes, yeah, he's yeah. Asian. Yi. Yi Yan Lian. Yes, Lee, he was so bad. Was oh, so man. bad. So I bad. Remember. I don't remember. He was, he was in the Yao Ming craze. You know? Yes, dude. He was a fan favorite, too. People wanted him to get in. As soon as he got in, he was trash. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> oh, well, I guess, yep. I guess what I'm saying is, is that when we think about players in the NBA from around the world, you know, um, I mostly think of guys from, you know, Europe. Listen, Giannis from Greece. Um, where is Luca from? Uh, Slovenia. Oh, Luca? Yeah. Sir? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, again, think about Giannis and Luca and all these like international star players. Okay, just from Serbia. Okay. okay. I said Croatia. My okay. Point. Okay. From from Serbia, Croatia. Yeah. The, the, my point is, is this: we got these guys from around the world playing in the NBA, and that's cool because the best guys from around the world want to come play in the NBA. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't ever remember like a, a young, cool Japanese black guy who's speaking Japanese to all these Japanese reporters. That's a very unusual. And uh, Alex, to your point, I, I agree, man. I think it's an exciting person. Like, like, for example, when, when people think about, you know, why would Otani want to go play in LA you think about or or New York for that matter you think about what those teams have been to international players and what those massive communities could mean to guys from other countries mm-hmm. but the Lakers now have a guy that's that's an interesting unusual combo. yeah it's, it's I don't think they got him for no, that but I think not. it's a positive it's what I, I know but it's what I know but I do think that I do think that some players get acquired for those reasons obviously oh, really? it's not yeah I for for internet i mean we talked about otani earlier this week like it's part of getting him it's not just getting this great player it's and it's getting everything that comes with them uh right. but i, well, I just I like the way, i guess the, way just, the padres maybe like the padres utilize the hispanicness of their clubhouse right i mean yeah. all the you know murals around town let's let's try and go attract that community to these kinds of guys we've got yeah. them it's also like they get Joe Musgrove, but they also get the hometown kid. They also get the ambassador of the club now that's going to go everywhere and be the local guy. Um, but my 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 reasoning for loving Rui is just a visible aspect of his game that the Lakers just do not have or possess until last night. You know, I've watched this team be terrible since they traded Kyle Kuzma. They haven't had a guy, and, I, and Kyle Kuzma has his flaws, but I mean like that type of player that size a swing athletic big and with can him fan and who can make yeah. shots yeah and with Rudy, just Kuzma watching it just watching him yesterday the mm-hmm. energy and i know it's his first game so he went all out but the energy the youthfulness of his game it it's just it's a little bit more precise looking than when austin reeves does the things he does um but i just really like the kid and i forgot how much how good he is on the basketball not how relax browner don't get all your panties in the wall when I see how good he is. I'm just saying, like, he was really good at Gonzaga. And if he can do a, half of that with the Lakers, that's a huge plus. Mm. You know what I thought was the smartest thing he did last night? Um, give the ball to LeBron. Because I watched him many times get a pass from LeBron, an inbounds pass, and then immediately give it back to me. It said to me he understood he's a young the kid. The assignment. Yeah, he's a young kid. And this guy's twice my age. And this is his team. And what a um, honor and privilege it is to have left Washington nonsense. And now I get to play for the Lakers. And it's he talked about it the other night. It's a lot closer to get to Japan, get home, playing here. And I get to play with this guy, like the all-time legend who's about to break the scoring record in the history of the league. I'm Hey, LeBron, give me – here, here you go. You gave it to me. I give it right back to you. Respect. I know that sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, like it wasn't all positive last night. Mm. Russell Westbrook is worse in person than on <laughs> television because you can see the other stuff There's you a, can't see on television. Yeah. 
Like I was, I was one of those people who was like, he figured it out. I'm happy for him. I think he's gonna work for the Lakers going forward. And then you watch it in person, which is always the last shoe to drop, and it is a disconnect. It is yeah. a disconnect. I man. mean, Scott, we spent the entire first quarter and a half talking about how LeBron looked like he was just whiny, how LeBron looked like he just did not want to be there last night. And it was kind of lazy, actually. Like every yeah. time he got the ball, he's like, "All right, gave it to me, shoot." You know, like I'll just I mean, shoot how, from wherever I'm at. He let there Pat Beverly solid, get busy in the first quarter. There was a solid, you know, five to eight minutes there in the second quarter, I think, or third quarter, mm -hmm. where the Lakers were just throwing threes up. Mm -hmm. They were just like, let's just not run an offense. Let's just shoot. We'll beat this team somehow. And it wasn't until, and I noticed this, I don't know if you guys noticed this, it wasn't until Ham gave LeBron and AD minutes together that they actually started making a run in the fourth quarter. It was LeBron, AD, Rui, Pat Bev, because he had a good game, and Schroeder. It was Schroeder last night who had a really good game, too. Mm -hmm. Maybe it wasn't Pat Bev in the fourth, but it's just like, that, I think LeBron and AD, and Le, AD makes LeBron happy. I think it was LeBron, <laughs> AD, Russ, um, Schroeder, and Not Rui, Russ. because I think you even said to me, you said, this is their closing team, um, but they're missing... Um, Reeves. Reeves. Yeah. I mean, I think that's when, yeah. you, if that's what we're talking about. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about towards the, the fourth quarter where they pulled it, well, pulled away. Mm -hmm. It was a little different lineup. I don't think Russ was in it. Mm. But I, yeah, I think when Reeves comes back, you probably place him in instead of Russ. And that's probably your closing lineup for the Lakers. Well, it was good. It was really, I mean, a very, um, it was a really great thing. You know, like, like I didn't realize today was the, the anniversary of Kobe. And I didn't realize that last night when getting tickets to the game against San Antonio that we would get the new player, Rui, who you and I obviously seem to find very interesting for different reasons. You yes. more from a basketball perspective, me for from a, from a cultural perspective. And um, and we had this great game. I mean, last night was fun, guys. Like, that was a really fun thing to do. I don't know how you guys felt about the drive going up and coming back, but like coming back. I don't know how long it took you, Alex, but I think I saw this morning your text that said, hey, we're home. And you couldn't have been a few minutes behind us, and you guys still had to go down to North Park. Yeah, we we mentioned that when we passed your exit. We're like, oh, that's why it doesn't think it's right. so long, because we still got 25 minutes to go. <laughs> I mean, I will say, moving further up into North County does help when you're going to Orange County or to L.A. It does, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I didn't mind it. It was it was good company. We had good conversations. We had hilarious conversations on the way to LA. I missed I missed two exits because we were so caught up in the stories <laughs> story story time. Um, but no, it was a good time. Got home, passed out immediately, and this morning, yeah, I was exhausted, but it's all good. It's yeah. worth it. Yeah, it was worth it for sure. Um, I gotta say, on the airwaves of 1090 and on all of the you know YouTube and TV and you know all the audio podcast platforms where we are. I got to say to my friends and colleagues up at 710 in L.A. Um, who hosted us last night, I just loved it. And I actually, I'll be honest with you guys, I know this is going to sound a little weird, but I loved watching you guys interact with my colleagues from L.A. who are all the sales guys and the top management guys, you know, um, the guys who actually are running the station and selling the station. And they seem to get a kick out of meeting you. And uh, you guys seem to enjoy meeting them. and. They hosted us last night and it was awesome. It was just, it was a three of us plus Jason Lawhead, uh, Bernard Thompson, who uh, was going to the game anyway, came and hung, hung out with us. And then our friend Ryan Dyrud, who runs a website called the LA Football Network, who actually on Fridays does a two hour radio show on 1090. So we had a good crew last night. It was funny though, because we were at Yard House in LA Live and that we were there from probably what, what time do you think you got there, Alex? Uh, like, 10 minutes before six, probably. Yeah. Something like that. So I probably got down there about 10 after six and we had one beer at the bar and, I, and we were like, well, let's just go, even though the game's at seven 30. And then when we went up to the, the suite, we were the only people in there. And I remember Lawhead going, so why were we not coming here first? There's <laughs> cold beer in the refrigerator. They got tacos and hot dogs and, and chicken nuggets for Browner. Who was Browner? I ordered that special for you, dog. Dude, I crushed about, I don't know, 10 of those. At least yeah. 10. It was great. It was great. And I had the two espresso martinis to get the night rolling. Mm -hmm. I was lit, boy. <laughs> the old. I was lit, boy. And they almost didn't let me in, though. Uh, truth be told, if we being transparent, I almost didn't even get in the crypto staple, whatever. 
All right, well, well, hold on. We'll tell the story in a second here. Um, but, yeah, we're going to out you for your man purse. You know, dude, yeah, and, man. dude, speaking about being lit, man. So so Lawhead, I think probably about <laughs> the third quarter decided, well, you know what? I'm not driving home. Kaplan's driving Alex, home. Blame Alex. Nope. No. No. Nope. Okay, wait. Nope. Okay, there's a story here. I didn't know this, that there's something going on that I did not know. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. Oh, God, I can't <laughs> wait to hear this. Oh, I can't oh, wait to hear this. God. All right, uh, here's the deal. Yeah. For, for those of you that have asked, um, you know, through Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or email or whatever else, man, um, you're like, hey, did you guys have a good time last night? How was it? It's great. We'll tell you some of the stories from last night. Uh, I've got some videos to show you as well. And uh, And I love everybody on Twitter who is, like, offended that we went to a Laker game. One of the things that I know Alex tweeted was, gosh, it'd be great to have one of these in San Diego. I mean, you got to drive two hours to get to an NBA game. It would be awesome to have. I don't think it's really on the radar, but it would be awesome. All right, look, we're in the Seven Mile Casino studio. SevenMileCasino.com is the place to be. Uh, and when we come back, I got to hear the story because I'll tell you right now, you talk about being lit, boy. You got to hear the, I mean, who I drove home with last night. Stick around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Brought to you by MedFly. Sleep better, feel better, live better. Dominating the SoCal radio airwaves for over 20 years. Join Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner for Kaplan and Crew every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Only on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk and the Mightier 1090.com. At Shelter to Soldier, being a private nonprofit, we rely on the community. Thankfully, we have sponsors like the Barnes Firm that get behind us. We understand uh, the difficulties that uh, many of our, our veterans uh, face when they come back into uh, civilian life. And uh, this program just seemed like the perfect fit. Today, we're catching up with Barney. And he is now in our matching phase of our program. He is meeting eligible veterans in what we call speed dating. Like me, swipe me right How's it going? Here. So we have just uh, recently approved five new veterans for our program. So um, Barney will be meeting every single one of them to see if he is the perfect match for them. Barney's perfect date would be a nice long walk on the beach, and then he would like to end the night with a nice dinner with his uh, veteran. We got to find the, the right person for the right dog. When someone you know has COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, things can progress very quickly, making them feel hopeless. But it doesn't have to be like this. See, Mom, this place is going to be great for you. They're going to help you breathe better. Pulmonary rehabilitation at La Mesa Rehab focuses on patient education and training. We use special therapies to improve your lungs, clear out mucus, and keep you out of the hospital. Pulmonary rehab is Medicare approved. Call now to see if you qualify or ask your doctor about La Mesa Rehab today. Since 1975, San Diegans have trusted the Murray Lampert family for their home remodeling projects. We continue our commitment to deliver high quality home remodeling and construction to our customers without an expensive showroom. When you're adding companion units or ADUs to bring value to your home, our team has the experience to handle everything. Plus, our strong relationships with the city makes adding on easier for homeowners. Visit murraylampert.com for your consultation. Surf Soccer has been around for over 30 years. We're based here in San Diego, but we are the premier national youth sports brand in soccer. Our mission is to create experiences and opportunities for kids, and we do that here mostly in San Diego with our 1,000 kids, but we also do it through our events where we really help kids chase their dreams. PNC Bank sponsorship helps the kids here. One, it is to continue to help fund facilities like this where the kids can come play soccer. Two, it is really through our scholarship program. There are a lot of kids in San Diego that have incredible levels of talent, but they can't afford to play on a team like surf. And so a lot of our sponsorship dollars go back into scholarships to give an opportunity for kids who are low to moderate income to play on one of the elite teams in the U.S. Having a partner like PNC who is community oriented and cares about the development of youth in the community is amazing because our missions are completely aligned and we're both driven by helping develop kids and in this case through sport in San Diego. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Brought to you by MedFly. Sleep better, 
Feel better, live better. Listen to the Mike Greenberg Show, 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific, Monday through Friday. Greeny brings his unmatched depth of sports knowledge, fun, and entertainment back to ESPN on a daily basis. The Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk, and the Mightier 1090.com. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Hey, everybody. It's Scott Kaplan from Kaplan and Crew. And with me right now is Rick Slider. He's the CEO of MedCline, which, by the way, is a pillow that is going to change your life. You have no idea what I'm talking about, but I'm telling you right now, Rick, how you doing, man? Where, where do we find you today? Scott, great to, great to talk to you. I'm in, uh, I'm in sunny San Diego, a place you're pretty familiar with. Yeah, I'm glad it's sunny out. I see the Padres stuff right over your, over your head. That looks pretty cool. And some Beastie Boys, you got some cool stuff behind you. We, uh, we had a different sports team uh, up on the wall for a while that had to be taken down, oh, say, half a dozen years ago. But uh, the Padres still flies prominently on the wall. I love it, man. Hey, if you could, while we have this time together, can you tell everybody the backstory of MedCline and how you guys have become such a big San Diego company selling all over the world and, and what the deal is with the MedCline systems? Sure. Uh, MedCline started here in San Diego, started by a radiologist um, whose primary practice was at UCSD, and he was a longtime sufferer of heartburn and acid reflux. Um, tried everything, tried diet changes, uh, was taking medication, uh, proton pump inhibitors or PPIs that a lot of people take, but he was looking for a natural way to reduce his heartburn symptoms. And he found through trial and error that when he slept in an incline and when he slept on his side, his heartburn and acid reflux symptoms would dissipate. Um, because he's a doctor, he wanted to make sure that this just wasn't um, by chance. And so he set up some clinical studies using a system that he designed and patented. Um, we got clinical trial results found that there was a strong reduction in, in the esophageal acid that would take place uh, during the night, reducing his symptoms. And with that, decided to create a product called MedCline um, and commercialized it a few years ago. Uh, and that is really how uh, our company began with his personal desire to stop his heartburn and, and uh, reflux symptoms. That's amazing. It really is amazing. Like when you have something wrong, you're like, I'm going to fix this problem. But you know, what's amazing to me is that acid reflux is a problem that obviously a lot of people have. But for me, I have a, I have shoulder pain, chronic shoulder pain from the way I sleep because I sleep with my arm over my head and then my pillow in between. So when I got my first med client, I didn't realize there's the, the, the reflux relief pillow, but there's the okay. shoulder relief pillow and it's completely changed everything for me. My, my shoulder pain has gone so far down because I'm no longer sleeping like this. I'm like underneath. And I, tell me about the shoulder pillow, please. Sure. Um, first of all, I'm so glad to hear that, it, that it's working for you. That's fantastic. Um, secondly, uh, as we brought MedCline to the marketplace, we found that there were a number of individuals that benefited from therapeutic side sleeping beyond just those suffering from heartburn or GERD. Um, and the primary use is for shoulder pain. And the reason I think people like you have been so comfortable with the MedCline is because of our patented arm pocket. When you try and sleep on your side and you have shoulder pain, you run the risk of um, you know, your shoulder getting frozen, uh, exacerbating pain that you might be feeling, whether it's due to rotator cuff, general shoulder soreness. And so our incline has a patented arm pocket that allows you to either rest comfortably on your elbow or to slide through. Sounds like what you do. What I slide do. your arm through the, the system so you can stay at an elevation and sleep comfortably on your side throughout the night. And today, here in 2023, our shoulder product is actually our top seller. It surpassed uh, those that suffer from from heartburn and acid reflux simply because there's more people with shoulder injuries across the country. <laughs> um, and we're we're glad that we're able to help you out. It's awesome. Hey, um, we don't have a lot of time, but 
in the last minute, would you just tell everybody how the 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 MedCline products though have gone viral, particularly on TikTok? Just give us like a, a 30 or 60 seconds about what what has happened. You know, I'd, I'd love to say that I'm a marketing genius here, Scott, but really it's just about excited consumers sharing the benefits they get of MedCline. And it's amazing what happens when people finally can get a good night's sleep, how they're so excited to share that information. And recently, um, we've always been uh, a part of social media, uh, but recently we, we've kind of found a niche within, within TikTok. I didn't know that healthy sleep TikTok was a subgenre, but it really is. Uh, and with a few different posts, uh, we've seen uh, over just in the last 30 days, over 10 million people exposed to uh, our MedCline product. So we're excited about the virality that this has created. I think it's in part because we have a 95% customer satisfaction rate. We know we can help people get a good night's sleep. It does take a while to adjust and sleep differently. Um, but uh, we're excited to see kind of the viral nature of, of our product grow. And we're excited to help out as many customers as possible. It's awesome. I want to encourage everybody who's watching right now, go to medcline.com, medcline.com. Look at the different products. Know you're supporting a San Diego company. And I encourage everybody, sleep better with our friends from MedCline. Drivers are getting in accidents at a rate we've never seen before, jumping 18% since 2020. There are higher incidents of speeding and more aggressive driving since the pandemic began. Please slow down and drive safely. It can save a life. An ADU is an accessory dwelling unit, and it's become one of the most popular solutions to housing in the, in the United States. We constructed this to provide housing for my mother, who is elderly. Well, I wanted to downsize. At my age, that's what I wanted to do. Eric engaged the services of Murray Lambert, a top building company. This is an 825 square foot uh, structure, but it actually looks more like a thousand because of the spatial considerations. Micah was great. He took the ball and ran with it, and came up with this really great combination. It always appealed to me, high ceilings. It gives a sense of space, of openness, and I like that. Oh, I would give this experience a 10, for sure. <laughs> plus, 10 plus. From fitness to medical technology, explore how people are leading healthier lives on Your Health. Join Erica Cardenas as she introduces you to health experts and discover how our daily choices affect our well-being. Plus, learn simple tips for a healthier living. Your Health, Sunday at 4.30 p.m. on Your View and YourView.com. Brought to you by La Mesa Rehab, improving the lives of those with all types of lung disease and long COVID symptoms. Surf soccer has been around for over 30 years. We're based here in San Diego, but we are the premier national youth sports brand in soccer. Our mission is to create experiences and opportunities for kids. And we do that here mostly in San Diego with our 1,000 kids, but we also do it through our events where we really help kids chase their dreams. PNC Bank sponsorship helps the kids here. One, it is to continue to help fund facilities like this where the kids can come play soccer. Two, it is really through our scholarship program. There are a lot of kids in San Diego that have incredible levels of talent, but they can't afford to play on a team like surf. And so a lot of our sponsorship dollars go back into scholarships to give an opportunity for kids who are low to moderate income to play on one of the elite teams in the U.S. Having a partner like PNC who is community oriented and cares about the development of youth in the community is amazing because our missions are completely aligned and we're both driven by helping develop kids and in this case through sport in San Diego. At the Barnes Firm, we're seeing more pedestrian and bicycle accidents. Drivers are rolling through red lights and distracted driving makes every intersection a danger zone for pedestrians. Look both ways when crossing, even if you have the right of way. Welcome back. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, John Browner, and Alex Padilla. Great friends. Hey, it's Kaplan and Crew from the 7 Mile Casino Studio, 7milecasino.com. Grande, Brownman, and Kevin Keatsman is getting ready to jump in. Kevin Keatsman 
has been the voice of Kansas City sports radio for like the last 25 years. And uh, like we were talking earlier, uh, reinvented through podcasting. And Kevin Keatsman is back on with us. Kev, what's going on, man? Scotty, Caps, and crew. How you boys doing? Everything good in Southern Cal? Yeah, dude. You know what, man? Right now, the Farmers Insurance Open is going on here in San oh. Diego. And if you turn on the Golf Channel, dude, um, and you see what's going on here, I don't know what the weather's like in Kansas City or what it's going to be like for the game this weekend, but the rest of the country and the world is seeing blue skies, the oh. ocean, the green grass. I mean, we got a lot of rain recently, and it's been chilly. So supposedly it's as greener than yeah, ever. But it's, dude, wait, you got to see it on TV, Kev. I played Torrey Pines maybe 25 years ago, almost maybe 30 when I was in TV. We were out there covering a Chiefs Chargers game and had the Saturday off after we sent our tape back. And I went out there with a guy that had worked at the CBS Philly at the time. And I beat him on the last hole. I'll never forget it. You know, it's, it's funny how you can remember golf things. You can't remember old girlfriends' names. <laughs> There's so many things you can't remember. I can remember golf rounds. It's crazy. Well, Kev, um, what is it going to be like? I mean, I, as I'm bragging about the weather here in San Diego and in Southern California, can weather play a factor in the AFC championship game this weekend? Yeah, this one's going to be cold. If you watched the Chiefs last week, you saw it was a little wet, but it really wasn't all that cold. It was like 40 degrees, which isn't – for football players, they don't care, Scott. You know this. 40, mm -hmm. 50 degrees, 30s, no big deal. We're probably looking at a high Sunday of about 24 degrees, and that's cold for here. We really don't get like that a lot. When it happens, it's for a couple of days. It looks like it's coming in for about 36 hours, but it's coming in for this game. So it will be cold. It'll probably be the coldest game either one of them played. I don't think it was that cold maybe even in Buffalo last week when the Bengals played there. So it's always odd to me. You know, modern football strange. The Chiefs are practicing indoor all week. They're not going outside. They won't do anything really outside until Sunday. I don't know if the Bengals do the same thing, but it's it's just strange how football has evolved. They will practice all week in 68 degrees indoor facilities and then go out and try to play on Sunday. I know. And, and with, with Patrick Mahomes' his ankle, I mean, the cold, I wonder if it will be impactful because, you know, yesterday we were watching this press conference where he comes walking in and then goes walking out. And in the 10 steps that I can watch him, I don't I don't see any limp. What's the uh, what's the expectation on Mahomes? He was a full participant in practice on Wednesday. We don't have the report yet for Thursday. He did media before the Thursday practice. He said it was better on Thursday than it was on Wednesday. It's gotten better every day. I think the only line you need to know, they asked Eric Bieniemy, the offensive coordinator, you know, what he thought of Patrick Mahomes' progression from Saturday until Wednesday. He said, I don't know what they're doing for him, but I want some of it. That's all he said. <laughs> Whatever they're giving him is, I want, I'll have what he's having. So, look, I don't think there's any question Mahomes is going to play. I don't think you're going to see a lot of it. Maybe – as he walks off a field or a moment here or there, he limps just a little bit. But I don't think you're going to see a lot of it when he plays. I'm the only one here bold enough to ask this question because it's sacrilegious to say or even question anything about Patrick Mahomes. But I'm beginning to wonder if this injury was not nearly as severe as it looked yeah. during the game on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And we know sometimes you can be upset with reactions. They told him he could not come back into that game on Saturday until he went and got an X-ray in the locker room. He finally relented and went in and got it. And that's when they told him, look, it's negative. We're going to play in the second half. And he piped down. He stopped fighting with Andy Reid and people on the sideline. So I'm, I'm literally beginning to wonder if maybe this wasn't overblown. Scott, you would know better than me. I don't know the severity of different high ankle sprains, but I understand there's multiple ligaments there. It could have been one. This was different for me. Most of the high ankle sprains that I see people get, it's a lineman planting a foot, trying to twist. It's a running back or receiver taking a corner and planting everything they've got. And they blow out their tire. We've seen those ugly uh, pictures and videos. This was different. This was a player rolling over on it. And I, I, I don't know if that's better or worse, but for whatever reason, it just doesn't seem to be too severe. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. We're talking to Kevin Keatsman and uh, I'll tell you all about Kevin's podcast here in just a second. But um, the guy who is the lead trainer of the um, Chiefs has been with Andy Reid forever. His name is Rick Burkholder. Yeah. And Rick is an old, old, old friend of mine. Cause he was the trainer when I was in college at Pitt, he, he was probably, you know, 22, three, four, like really, really fresh out of school. And he was our trainer. And so I've known this guy for 30 something years and um, he's great at what he does. So it's either a, he's done a great job or B to your point, we see the injury on, on video and it looks really bad, but Kevin, Alex and Browner will both tell you last night we were at the Laker game. And at the end of the first half, Anthony Davis, who's always hurt, throws Ooh. up his half-court shot, comes down, rolls his ankle, and <laughs> stayed down. We all thought he was done. Right, guys? Yeah. Let me take a look at this. Terrible. Kevin. Watch Looks his right terrible. ankle right here, Kevin. Oh, good he, God. 
Yeah. Yeah. See, those are the ones that look a lot worse to me than what Mahomes had. Mahomes had a guy land on him, but it, again, it was the other way. You know, when the ankle turns out, most high ankle sprains the ankle, it buckles under and goes out. This one was the opposite. He landed on it and went inward. I'm not sure uh-huh. the ankle goes as far in as it does out. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Nobody's yeah. asking that I, question here. No, no, nobody's even asked that. Yeah. It looked as if the someone also fell on his knee. And so the yeah. just the amount of body weight that collapsed on top of him, you're, I thought it looked way, way worse than the outcome actually was. And so when he actually started trying to walk on it and trying to play in it, I knew he was. it wasn't that bad. But they say it's worse to day two, day three, day four, an injury like that. But he apparently is, is okay. So, uh, you know, I, will, I wish people stop talking about it now. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of would have thought with all that weight on it and the way it buckled inward, that that would lead maybe to a better chance of breaking something, a broken bone or broken ankle. But once that mm-hmm. was negative, we're just talking about ligaments, right? Being sprained yep. and inflamed and everything else. So I, I don't know. I, I, I just wish someone, I, I should probably get a doctor on my podcast. This is dumb that I'm asking you, you know, guys. You know, you know what? I got the guy. I got we the don't guy know. for you. Okay, we'll do it. Let's go. Call Barkholder up. Put him on the <laughs> podcast and say, what happens when the ankle goes inward and not outward? You know, we should do that. Big difference, I think. No, no joke, though. Seriously. Um, there's a guy here in town in San Diego. His name is David Chow. He's got a website called SixScore.com, Sports Injury he's, Central, SixScore.com. Yeah, he, he, he does he's Rome great. all the time. He's And you should you should have him on, bro. He's really, really good. He's really yeah. good. And he bought, and, and after I talked to him earlier, and he there's no concern about, like, playing. Like, like, obviously, that's the story. He's going to play. And, but he's his only concern is that that's the planting foot now. Yeah. So I we all know Mahomes is different. He he rolls around. He does throws the ball and all. I think he's underhanded a few passes even. You know, like. Yeah. But he's like the the biggest concern is when you have to plant and throw it deep. That's the only concern. Yeah, and I don't think they can completely numb it up. I think it, you know a lot of times they numb things up in football, but he does have to feel that foot. I mean, he's got to feel it plant on the ground. He has to know where it is. So I think that's kind of an issue too. Now they're pretty good. They can isolate it. They can shoot stuff into the ankle. I think that will alleviate whatever pain he may feel without numbing his, his foot completely, but you do not want to have a numb foot. I know that he said this week, it isn't even close. The turf toe that he had two years ago when he played in the playoffs, the year they lost to Tampa, he said that was the worst injury of his life. He said it was absolutely unbearable. He was, he said, I was literally playing in the postseason with curled toes. Mm. He said, the only way Mm. I couldn't feel pain was to curl my toes and run with curled toes in my shoe. Now they didn't talk about it at the time, but he said, he basically said, this is nothing compared to that. Wow. Uh, we're, we're all going to turn into doctors. At yeah, that yeah, first Chiefs. Know, right. Yeah. We're all at uh, the first chief series. We're like, I don't know, man, he don't look so good <laughs> or he looks great. He's fine. We're all going to be doctors after that first drive. <laughs> you guys see what the line has done on this game? <laughs> oh dude. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Here, Alex, will put it up chief, on the screen. It, let, chiefs show minus it three, right. All the way to Bengals minus two and a half. Yep. And now the chiefs are a one point favorite again today. It's moved, again, it's moved oh. another point and a half. Now that Mahomes is healthy and on the practice field. Wow. It's insane. Well, well the thing is, is that um, I felt like everybody was taking Cincinnati last week. It was a sexy pick. I jumped in this week, Cincinnati in Kansas city, where I know they've had a lot of success and burrow has been three. No, in fact, we'll, uh, we'll kind of put some stuff here on the screen for you. Kev, to take a look at, um, Joe Burrow, they're calling Arrowhead Burrowhead yeah. in Cincinnati. And Alex, if you could, for everybody that's listening, just go through what Joe Burrow has accomplished against the Chiefs. Uh, three and zero, uh, two and zero in Cincy, one and zero in Kansas City. If I got that correct, uh, nine hundred eighty-two yards, nine touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, and a completion of almost seventy percent. Yeah. So why has Joe Burrow and the Bengals? Why have they had this success against the Chiefs? Okay, this is weird because we look at each of the three games here a little bit individually. The first game was that Chiefs epically bad defense three years ago, and they went to Cincinnati and didn't know what hit them. Jamar Chase had like 230 yards or something in the game, and they must have had four or five plays over 40 yards, and the Chiefs secondary was terrible. They were really bad. So the Chiefs defense got better. Uh, They played them last year, okay, in the playoffs. The Chiefs were up 21-3 in that game. Nobody remembers that. Patrick Mahomes lost that game. He threw two interceptions and the Chiefs had a fumble and he had a sack fumble. So they had three, they went up 21 3 at Arrowhead, just kicking their butt and gave it away. All right. They can't do that Sunday. If the Chiefs lose the battle of turnovers, they lose it. This year, they went to Cincinnati and this is the Chiefs' best defense. Of the five defenses the Chiefs have had in the AFC title game with Mahomes and Reed, this is their best. And it's young, so it doesn't mean they can't make mistakes, but they're just more athletic. They're just better. They won the game last week. They got two late turnovers. 
from Trevor Lawrence to ice the game away on a day that their quarterback was hurt. The defense was fantastic against Jacksonville last week. Doesn't mean they'll be great against Cincinnati, but Cincinnati has a couple issues too. The game earlier this year, the Chiefs are going up 11 points with eight minutes to go. They're just marching downfield. They're up four. They're going in 11. Do you guys remember the play where three defenders stood up Travis Kelsey and they wouldn't blow the whistle and a fourth comes in and they stripped the ball away from him? They had four guys on Kelsey. He couldn't yeah, do it. Yeah, I remember that. Ground. He literally couldn't get to the ground at this point. And they ripped the ball away. And then they went down, uh, the Chargers, or the Bengals did, and won the game. The Chiefs were going up 11. That game was over. And they had beaten them again, just like they had last year, 21-3. Joe Burrow's never scored 30 points in a playoff game. Never. Patrick Mahomes averages almost 32 points a playoff game. And I think that matters. And listen, we know this about football. If one of these teams loses the turnover battle by two, they're beat. These teams are too close. But the Chiefs have played better in the last two games and actually been the better team than the Bengals. They've just pissed it away. And mm -hmm. if you're telling me the Chiefs are going to show up, Mahomes is going to throw two picks on Sunday, they're beat. They're not going to beat the Bengals with two interceptions. But I don't the, think – so when it, how, about the, how about the pass rush too? Because I, I told these guys, like, the Bills don't present a pass rush. They just zero don't, without Von Miller. And the Chiefs, they do. They got Chris Jones. They got Frank Clark. They can present a big issue to this banged up O line. The two guys didn't practice again today. That to me is, could be a massive difference. Yeah, the Chiefs' pass rush is good. They don't get a lot of sacks, but that's not necessarily what they want. The big push comes from Chris Jones up the middle. You know, you guys know this is really hard to get sacks when you're playing in, in the nose in the middle. But if you can get, if you can push the center and the guards back, the one thing Joe Burrow doesn't like is pressure up the middle. He's a pocket passer. Any quarterback will tell you that. The last thing they want is pressure up the middle. They don't mind it coming from the ends. These Tom Brady doesn't mind the ends coming around. He can feel them. He can see them. What he doesn't want is the interior of his line coming back on him when he's trying to throw from the pocket. The Chiefs think they're pretty good at that, and they'll ha have some sort of effectiveness against Burrow. But the guy's a stone-cold killer. I mean, he's just a stone-cold killer. Um, but, you know, they scored 20 points two weeks ago against the Ravens and needed a 98-yard defensive touchdown to win the game. This is not, these teams are not good enough to say, hey, listen, one absolutely is going to beat the other. And I think America's reaction to this was, oh, this one's over. The Bengals are going to go kick the Chiefs butt this week. And I thought that too. Watching Sunday, I felt the same thing. And as the days have gone by, and I've looked at the numbers from these other games, the Chiefs have blown these games. The, guys, they're 17 and two against the rest of the league in the time period that they're 0 and three against the Bengals. Damn. That's crazy. Damn. So, when they, but there is a little bit of a fluke to this thing. There's no way the Bengals are that good. So when a 21-3 lead got blown, something happened before halftime between Tariq Hill, I think it was, and I think it was Nicole Hartman. I can't remember who the other person was, where they appeared to be having a discussion on the sideline. And when they came out of halftime, they, they just weren't right. And we never got what really happened. And then they traded Tyreek Hill. Is the chemistry better this year on this team? It definitely is. We've seen a couple of moments. It's a hot-blooded team, I mean, especially offensively. You know, everybody wants the ball here, and you can't get the ball to everyone. But it was shared more this year. Patrick Mahomes' statistics went up in every category. He completed more passes. He had more yards. He had more touchdowns. His percentage completion was higher. His quarterback rating was higher. He had more 30-plus yard plays this year than he did last year with Tyreek Hill. Everything they did this year was better, and their defense has improved. Why am I sharing this with you? Well, I think the Chiefs have been a disappointment. They've had four straight AFC title games in a row and only won one Super Bowl. I honestly believe this is their best team. I truly mm -hmm. do. And Scott, you've known me forever. I'm not a homer. I think this is the Chiefs' best team. I think they've got a defense capable of making some plays that could help them win a game. And if Mahomes is even 90%, I really like them this week. I really do. So do I. I'm taking the Chiefs. I, I Again, since he's the sexy pick, um, and – I love what you're telling me because I don't remember the games in detail like you do. And so to think of how close these games have been and how Kansas City lost the turnover battle, I'm with you. You're going to always lose if you lose the turnover battle unless you're the Chargers. That's a whole different story <laughs> for a whole different day. But I thought I'd, I'd take a little there, shot huh? every time. Yeah. while I could. I hey, we're in there. the Seven Mile Casino hey, Studios. Uh, it's Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. Kevin Keatsman is here. If you want to follow Kevin on Twitter, I highly recommend it. It's at KK Has Issues. KK Has Issues. That's the name of his podcast. And uh, and you can find out all about it on his Twitter page. Uh, Alex, you're about to jump in. Yeah, Kevin, I play fantasy football. I know this name. Can you school Browner and Scott on how good Isaiah Pacheco is for the Chiefs? Well, this was a complete and utter surprise. I mean, he's Mr. Irrelevant in this town. Uh, he's not making any money. They they pick him late in the draft. He had 
580 some yards rushing at Rutgers last year, I think. I mean, they drafted him. I, I went back and I read some of the draft reviews. You know where they give the grades? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And almost everyone in the country that did one on the Chiefs, this was a throwaway pick. It's a dart throw. It's a flyer. It'll be lucky if he makes the practice squad. So I don't know how they found this guy, but he does run like his career depends on it. Every single time he gets the ball, this is a crazy stat. I haven't verified this, but I heard, a, I think Dan Orlovsky said this on ESPN this morning. I haven't verified this. The Chiefs in the last 10 playoff games, they've rushed for over 100 yards in all 10 of them. We all just think of Mahomes. And maybe over that time period, Pacheco's the best runner they've had. They love throwing to McKinnon out of the backfield. He's a touchdown scorer. But for your big play in the middle of the field, Pacheco's a pretty darn good player. He he runs hard. He he does he keeps his eyes down. Scott, I know you love the, the ponies, man. He reminds me of a horse that's just got laser focus on that rail and he's going to go around and, and find that finish line. That's the way he runs. He's not an elite NFL player. He's never going to be an elite NFL player. But for the Chiefs to find a guy like that in the seventh round, that's a pretty big upgrade. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, he is. He's the Brock Purdy of the yeah, Chiefs. Yeah, dude, I was, uh, Brock Purdy of the Chiefs. The, uh, the Isaiah Pacheco and the Jarek McKinnon pickups were big if you played fantasy football because Jarek McKinnon caught, like, I don't know, 3,500 touchdowns in the last four weeks of the season. Yeah. That, that dude just could not stop scoring touchdowns. I think that's an element of the game. Obviously, I didn't know that's that either, but just like a visual watching the Chiefs this year, it actually feels like they have a run game now. Yeah, and, and some of it you have to wonder in their last playoff games, they've won most of those. So if you have a lead in the fourth quarter, obviously you're running the ball and you get over 100 yards. So maybe some of it's garbage yards. But I do think they're a better running team right now. And all I've thought about the last couple of years is what would this offense be if Kareem Hunt was still here? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and he obviously isn't. But I, I think they'll – I don't think they're done at running back. I mean, Bijan Robinson maybe in the draft out of Texas or a player like that, I think they'll look at that. They probably need to look at receiver again and, and try to find some home run threat. I don't know what they'll do. But it's pretty obvious that you can put NFL caliber players around Patrick Mahomes – as long as he has Kelsey playing at this level, you could put NFL Cloudwell players around him and they will all look pretty darn good. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a stupid question. You guys are very spoiled in yeah. Kansas City at the moment. Five straight AFC championships all in Kansas City. But you haven't won a Super Bowl with Patrick Mahomes' new contract. True enough. If they lose again, is there any talk of any, any change? Like, I don't know how you change if you keep getting this far every year. But if you're not winning... Like, I don't even know how to ask the question, but you get what I'm saying? Like, is there going to be any talk of we're not good enough? We have to do something. Are you talking about restructuring his contract and not paying him so much? Or are you talking about or Andy, Andy Reid may be one of the worst big game coaches in history? Go with that one. Okay, because he mm -hmm. is. And I think somebody said if he loses, he's going to three and seven in title games. He would be two and three at Arrowhead in five games if he doesn't win this one. And I've had five in a row, which nobody's had and only win one Super Bowl, that's dreadful. I agree mm -hmm. with you. That's horrible. See, they're, I, uh, of, they're, they're KU basketball is what they are. They're Kevin, regular season champs, and now KU won last year. They won the title, but they don't hardly ever win the title. They go in the tournament. They get knocked off. They're number one all year long, and then they don't win it. That's kind of what they are, and, and we're spoiled rotten here. Everybody expects them to win, and when they don't, I think Andy Reid's the guy that's going to get everybody's attention. We got two minutes. The, Brown, do it. The, the, the happier than happy, that's the syndrome. What they've been able to do, other teams get paid too. That's always my argument. And I don't know what you're saying. You're talking to them as of being spoiled, but it's hard to win that. And the fact that Andy Reid's gotten to that point multiple times is a sign of success. Now, just because you've made that success doesn't mean you're going to be a hundred percent every time. So you know, I if they want to start looking at Andy Reid, find somebody better. Good luck. Yeah, no, I, they're not going to find anybody better, I don't think. I've, I've mentioned this several times to you guys. The Chiefs can be a sloppy football team. They get careless. They think they're better than they are. Actually, what they don't. They know they're good. They think they're better than the other team by a wider margin than they are, and that gets in the way. That's not a problem this week. They've lost three times to this team. They're not going in thinking, hey, we're two touchdowns better than this outfit. So I just want – real quick, I just think that we're all – assuming because of Tom Brady that it's easy to win Super Bowls, whereas every right. other quarterback before him, every good quarterback before him, has told you how hard it really is. Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, see all those guys, Peyton Manning, you know? Brady win three or four where his defense allowed 17 points or fewer. So Mahomes has never been there. Yeah. You know, you tell me that the Chiefs are going to play the next two games and give up 17 points in both of them? We're having a parade here. Hmm. So yeah. Brady, Brady won a Super Bowl nine to three, didn't he? 
Yeah, against the Rams, I think it was yeah. 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 something yeah. gross like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah something, something <laughs> gross. It was a terrible game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 17 14 one year or something yeah. like that. Yeah, somebody. Hey, Kev, uh, it's great to see you, man. Good luck to your Chiefs. I, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm taking the Chiefs. I mean, it's Thursday, but I'm, I'm saying it right now. Everybody should follow Kevin, obviously. KK has issues. KK has issues. His website is kkhasissues.com. Kev, uh, enjoy the weekend. Stay warm out there, and uh, hopefully we'll be talking to you before the Super Bowl. Thank you, gentlemen. It's always my pleasure to be on. Thank you. All right. Kevin Keatsman, stopping by, talking AFC Championship game. That's a good conversation right there. That is a, I love Kevin Keatsman. I do, man. How about his camp? I don't think he has issues. You don't think so? No, he does. He does. Uh, all right, stick around. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios. We're going to get to the highlight of the day, man. This is Kaplan and Crew. You're watching Kaplan and Crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio and Your View, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Brought to you by MedFly. Sleep better, feel better, live better. Locally owned and operated, not some bland, uninspired, corporate, cookie cutter radio station, crap. We simply say to those stations, F you. The mightier 1090 ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk. Murray Lampert now brings architectural and interior design to a whole new level for your remodel, ADU, or whole house build. We're truly a team at Murray Lampert Design Build Remodel, and we don't take that lightly. Visit murraylampert.com. This is a huge wall. I'm sure it presents us some challenges. You're right, Sarah. And what it was was in the model, we noticed there it was too much wood. This was supposed to be clad. And with the beautiful stairs and railings, we realized that we need to come up with a different finish. So we used these reglets that are metal with the drywall, and it gave it this grid look that also matches up with the beams. Wow, that came out beautiful. If you want to see how they conquered more design challenges, check out Our Family, Your Home. When you're in pain, you need physical therapy that works, but you want to feel safe during these times. At La Mesa Rehab, your health is our business. We screen each patient, provide masks, and constantly sanitize our private individual treatment areas so you can focus on healing. The foundation of our physical therapy is education. Our therapists care and guide you through the healing process. Ask your doctor about La Mesa Rehab. The best care you can have at La Mesa Rehab. When you're adding companion units or ADUs to bring more value to your home, our experience plus our strong relationship with the city makes adding on easier for our homeowners. At Murray Lampert, we listen to you first, then design and build. Visit murraylampert.com. If you're going to count yourself as a fan of this radio station, you will need to continuously ask yourself one basic question. Am I listening? Enough. Pro tip, wives are not a good source for input on this. This is the Mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio. When you're adding companion units or ADUs to bring more value to your home, our experience plus our strong relationship with the city makes adding on easier for our homeowners. At Murray Lampert, we listen to you first, then design and build. Visit murraylampert.com. We're adopting dogs from local shelters, training them for post 9-11 combat veterans and we're able to donate these trained dogs to deserving veterans in need. Service dogs can range anywhere from fifteen to thirty-five, forty thousand dollars $40,000. And for someone getting out of the military that's seeking support and help, um, having that sort of price tag is daunting. So we really wanted to be able to support the veterans to make sure that they're getting a dog that they need in their life at no charge. You know, I was in a very dark place. Um, I was having suicidal thoughts, and I really needed an immediate help. We don't know if tomorrow is going to be there for us. Uh, so I found Shelter the Soldier uh, online and I reached out and somebody contacted me within 24 hours and in the next couple, couple of weeks I was already in the program meeting dogs. Your View Community Spotlight is brought to you by Bill Howe Plumbing, Heating, Air and Flood. When you're adding companion units or ADUs to bring more value to your home, our experience plus our strong relationship with the city makes adding on easier for our homeowners. At Murray Lampert, we listen to you first, then design and build. Visit murraylampert.com. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM ESPN Radio, SoCal Sports Talk.